Let's get started then. Let's take a look at a few things here. All right, so we head over to our classic Warrior Horses site, of course. And uh, the Warrior Horses, they've got a couple of lists here. They've got a list uh, called Battles. And in this list, all they're doing is they've got a, a battle, and they've got the commander for that battle. And then they've got this related list over here called Spoils, right? And so it's got a look up to that battle, and it's just got detail. So it's a real master, you know, parent-child kind of situation there. Okay. Now, because the, uh, the Warrior Horses love... Uh, all things, you know, horrible and painful. They've recently started getting to power apps. So let's take a look. They built a little power app around this called Spoils Tracker 3000, right? So if we run that little thing, a very exciting and beautiful app uh, that makes you all weep at its beauty. It comes up here, right? It lists those battles. And if you click on one of them, right, you'll get just the spoils for that battle. Wow-wee! Right? So that's cool. Right, and that's awesome. Now, how do we kind of integrate this, right? So we've got this idea of lists. We've got this idea of list formatting. How do we kind of create a unique or a shared experience here, right? What are, what are some of the things we can do uh, to make that a little better? So one of the things we can do, right, first off is add a, a way to launch uh, directly into that app, right? So if we want to come in here, we're going to go more because I want to choose a calculated column type. And I only do that because it's I just want the format, right? So... I really care about an editable value. So launch for that, I'm just gonna make it equals double quote, double quote. And I'm just hit okay. Now I'm head over to our samples repo where we have a sample for you called a generic launch power app. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna just paste that in here in advanced mode. All right, get rid of that junk. Paste this very beautiful format. Now let's make this a little bigger so we can see it. The whole idea is here, it just creates a button. And if I preview that, you can see it creates this beautiful button that says open an app. And then it's got this link here. Now, what the first thing I need to do is make sure it's pointed to my Power App. So if I go back to Power Apps, pick the Power App I want to link to, go to Details, I get this beautiful web link here. If I right click on that and I say Copy Link, I'm just going to head back to that format. And just everywhere that's in these first set of quotes, all the way up to the ampersand before hide nav bar, and I'm just going to paste that in. Now, you'll notice this actually happened to already be my power up, so it didn't change a lot. But then I've got this hide nav bar equals true, which will go to the little power app sweet bar junk, right? And then I have this item ID equals ID, and we'll talk about that. That's deep linking, and I'm going to show you that briefly. But the idea here is that's pretty good. Uh, one of the things, though, is I don't really like that icon. So if I head over here to Flycon, so Flycon.io, where I can search for an icon, I have to know there's one that I want. It's called Crown. I'm just going to hit this to copy the name, and I'm going to head back in here to this guy, and I'm just going to paste over this icon name with crown. If I preview that, ooh, it's so pretty. Now, if I save that, and I can click on this guy, right, and it's going to launch the app. Now, it just goes straight to the main page because it launched the app, right? So what is this item ID equals one all about? Well, let's see if we can handle that. Now, this isn't a Power Apps uh, class or anything, but I can show you briefly how we handle this. So if we go to the app. Uh, we go to the on start event. I'm just going to copy the code to handle my parameter, right? So let me copy that and I'll paste that sucker in here. Let's make it a little bigger so we can all see it. And so the whole idea is I'm just looking for parameter item ID. If it's not blank and it's a number, then I'm going to load something in my, uh, I've got a variable called battle item, right? And all it's going to do is going to go look it up from the battles list and stick it in there. And then it's going to navigate directly into the spoil screen. Very exciting. Let's save that. Let's publish and hope that uh, our publish catches up here. Yes, yeah, publish this beautiful version. All right, so we're going to publish that. We're going to give that just a minute uh, while we look at a couple of other items here. All right, so we'll come back to see the deep link working. But what if I want to do uh, some other stuff? Like if I look at my spoils list, well, that's kind of fancy. I've got a little icon here. Again, another icon from the, uh, the Fluent UI. And that's cool. Well, if I want that same experience over in Power Apps, All right? So I can do that. All I need to do is find those icons. And so let's see, diamond was one of them. Let's grab diamond, hover over that. We go to export and we're just gonna save it as SVG. That's just gonna download it for us. And then we'll do the same thing for the, uh, I think it was, let's see, let's say Fox product variant. There it is, very exciting name. All right, and we're just export, we're gonna save that one as SVG as well. And then, you know, we need money, of course. We're going to grab this money icon, and we're going to export that one to SVG as well. 
And then I think we've got one more, right? And that's the recycle bin. So let's just go to trash. There we go. Recycle bin. Now we're going to export that guy. Okay. So now we've got all those. That's exciting. We head back into our Power App. All right. We go over to Media. And we're just going to upload. And we go to my downloads where here they all are. I'm going to grab the ones I just did. I'm going to open them and stick them in right there, just as the SVG they are. Now, if I had wanted, and I, I just kind of forgot, but you can actually set the color of these uh, within Flycon here. So if you go to the advanced color options, uh, you could pick any number of options and they'll export that way. All right. So if I didn't want it to be you know, the standard kind of black, I could do orange, whatever I want. All right. But let's go back here. So now if I click on this little template guy, instead of sample image, I can actually write a switch statement that's almost identical to the switch statement I've written in the format. All right, so if I just paste that guy, bam. So you see, I'm now using the Fluent UI icons right here. It's great, it works well, I'm excited. All right, I can go back, I can see how they, what is it in here, I don't know, Invasion of the Grasslands. All right, beautiful. All right, but that's the idea, that's one idea. So now we've got some integration here, it's a similar kind of look and feel, and all I've done is just put an SVG directly in there. And that's, that's all right, but what if we do something a little further, right? What if back in our list, we add another column and we go, we're going to do another format only column. That is the hiding column. So I'm going to go more and we're going to go with another calculated column, which is right there. And we're just going to call this one support, All right? So, and we'll say again, equals double, double quote, just so we don't have to stare at that sucker. All right. So now we got that and I'm going to take another sample we've got. So format this column advanced mode and I'm just going to paste in uh, our other sample, which is a generic mail to button, all right? So all this is going to do, if I paste this guy in here, preview it, it creates this lovely thing, right? And if you hit it, it's gonna launch an, an email, all right? So let's save that and we'll see what that looks like. If I click that guy, I get an email launched, you know, it's got information from the list, right? So it goes to the person that it's for and it looks great. So that's nice. Again, that's a sample. We're not going to go into details on how that's put together, but that sample is available for you. Now, and if I look inside here, I actually have the same thing down here. So I have that same kind of support button, and that's cool. And they even have a similar icon because I've got, I picked one that purposely is also in Power Apps. Now, you'll find that actually Power Apps, we've got about 2,000 plus icons available in Fluent UI. And in Power Apps, you've got about 100. So big difference there. So if I wanted to, change this icon, right? So say someone comes down here and they're like, we don't like envelopes anymore, right? This is for automated chatbot support, or I don't know what. All right, we're just gonna put robot. And let's preview that. Hey, there's a beautiful robot icon. So that's great, but what do I do about Power Apps now? Now Power Apps no longer matches, right? I wanna use the same icon there. Well, if I head back over to Power Apps, the first thing I might do is I go to the tree view and I'm gonna go down here to the footer and I'm gonna insert Right, I could try and find another icon, right? You'll see that the icons are pretty limited here, but there's no robot. So if I want to add a guy, what I could do is I could add an image, right? So if I did the exact same thing I did before, where I'm going to upload, you know, I've already downloaded robot. Let's go ahead and grab it, right? So same way from Flycon. I upload that. That's great, right? And I'm just going to grab it. I'm just going to stick it in there, right? And so that seems okay at first, right? Okay, well, good. Now I've got that, and I grab this guy, and I grab the on select, which is just the launch for the email. It does the exact same thing, and I paste it in here. All right, ooh, not settings. Go to action. I go to on select. And I paste the exact same, very beautiful launch. Right. So now, I mean, it works. If I click it, all right, we're gonna get that same email experience. That's great. But one of the one of the problems I've got here is, you know, it doesn't quite act the same. All right. So if I hit play on this, it's a little more obvious. Right. We got a a nice hover color, dirt, dirt, nothing right there. All right, so what's going on? All right, let's see if we can fix that. Oh, thanks. Okay, if I click that guy, all right, and I click color, it says color here, but you click it, it's actually the fill. It's a lie, all right? So it's the fill, and right here you can see the fill is transparent, all right? But I don't actually have a color because that's coming from that SVG, and I have a hover fill, all right? So I could say the hover fill is going to be color dot red, right? Let's see what that looks like. So now if I hold Alt, well, that is not what I want at all, right? That is pretty lame, in fact. I'm um, going from there to this, right? Instead of showing the line is red. So what can we do about that? Well, that's what we're going to figure out in four minutes. We can do it. All right, there is a blog explaining this. So I'm going to fly through it, but you can check out the whole blog. It has all the steps right in there. 
Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to download that icon. So again, I've already downloaded the robot. All right, so let's go back into our power app area. There it is. And let's go open this guy. Where's my downloads? Got my downloads. I'm just going to open up robot in something called Inkscape. Inkscape is a free SVG editor. Uh, it's open source. Check it out. There's a link in the blog to it. And it's free and it's exciting. And you will uh, love it and we bet its beauty. Okay. And all that. So the idea here is we're going to take this icon and we're going to make it so we can use it. And the way we do that is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a square. We're just going to draw any kind of square. It doesn't matter. We don't want a stroke on it, though. And then we're just going to tap on this icon. And we're going to find out which one's bigger, height or width. Copy it, whichever one's bigger. And we're going to apply that same thing to the block. All right, so same thing, beautiful. Now we pick them both. Now we're going to go to our line and distribute a line relative to page. So that way we just kind of center them together. And we're going to go up to path. Again, I'm going really fast, but there's a blog about it. Exclusion. And the only thing I'm other thing I'm going to do is go to document properties. We'll bring them over here, and I'm going to resize the page to the content. That's it. So that's exciting. Then I'm going to do a save as. And in this case, because I just don't want all this extra junk that's in there, I'm going to pick optimized SVG. And we're going to call this robot. And we'll call it robot special two. I may have practiced. Okay, robot special two. Very exciting. There's a few different options uh, that you want to pick. Basically, just gets rid of all this extra junk we don't need. We're going to hit OK. And then if we look in our now our downloads folder, we've got a robot special 2, which I'm just going to open up in, say, Notepad right here. So robot special 2. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find and replace all of those double quotes with single quotes because I want to use it inside Power Apps. So I'm going to replace all. So I've got that. Got this beautiful thing here. The only thing I'm going to add, well, let's grab that. Let's just grab that guy and let's head back over here to our Power App. We can leave that alone. So in our Power App, now instead of this image, one of the nice things is we can actually set this to a uh, data URL. All right. So in this case, where it's exactly what we're going to do, we're going to grab uh, some of this. We just got to start it off instead of calling it the actual image. We're going to go there and we're going to say and add encode URL. And here's where we're just going to paste in our SVG that we just copied. That is not what we just copied. Let's grab, there we go. This. All right, and we'll close that out. So now we've pasted our SVG. That looks interesting, right? Because it's got that black. So one of the things we can do is if we happen to know the fill color, and we do, we're just going to grab that and we're going to say, right in here, we're going to say the uh, fill is going to equal uh, bam, bam, like a this, right? And I think that's the wrong color. Let me see what that's supposed to be. Let's pick the correct color. That's kind of important. All right, we'll grab that and we'll paste that in instead. Now, what you'll see is a little weird. It actually disappears, right? And that's okay, because now we can use the fill because we basically created a reverse image here. If we go up to fill, all right, let's set that to, you know, just be black for now, it's fine. All right, so it's black, but if we play this, now we get a nice hover effect. We actually get the real hover effect because we are essentially just setting the background, the fill value of the SVG, and the SVG itself is actually a negative um, of the icon. Okay, everyone got all that? Okay, real quick, let's wrap up and summarize. So for deep linking, you can build a button using the sample, just append your ID or whatever else you need to that href. And then you can handle those parameters directly to the power up. It creates a really nice integration piece, especially if you're using those lists and you want to be able to drive those directly, or you want to be able to link those, you know, all over the place throughout SharePoint. Then if you want to use those same icons everywhere, that fluent or the flycon.io is your friend. Uh, it's going to make it a lot easier to find those. Then you can edit them with Inkscape as you export them and whatever you need. And it's very exciting. And finally, here's some resources. So check out the blog post, but also check out these two samples to help get you started. And that's it. That's all for me. Awesome, Chris. Excellent. There's no horsing around in that demo, is there? But I'm All right. <laughs> <laughs>